Joel, Blaine Gray here, Plastering for Beginners, and today we're talking about silicon render, and um, probably why it's one of the easiest systems to use in rendering. Um, basically, we've just finished rendering a house, I've just got in, it was all sand cement mainly, but the top end was um, a top cable end, and it basically all fell down. We've had to rebuild it, and a builder who decided to, uh, decided to do it in timber. So it was timber, and then we got cement board on top. And because it was in timber, the worst thing to do with a flexible product like that is put sand cement on a cement board, uh, especially when it's fixed to a timber background because the timber moves, sand cement cracks. So we decided to use a silicon render. Now this is all I used to do when I worked in New Zealand. I didn't use this product. We used a product uh, called Stoll, which is a German brand. But I forgot how easy it is using a silicon um, a silicon rendering system. It's, it was just... It was so easy. It was great to use. Um, the product itself is easy to apply. It, it sticks to your trowel. Um, it was great. So today I'm going to talk about the pros of using a silicon-based product, um, compare it to sand cement, and I'm going to walk you through the full process on how to do it and uh, show you how to get the best results. There's little tips as well to you know get you further in, uh, in doing it. Like I said, I did it for about a year in New Zealand. This is pretty much the only product I used. Um, and I loved it. And since I've been in the UK, I've only really used sand cement. So it's been a bit of a dream going back to a silicon based render. So yeah, the only problem was because I was used to using Stow, this is a, we use Baumit. Um, I just wasn't used to the product selection. So I just rung the, uh, the rep and he talked me through which ones I should be using, um, for the situation I was working on. So I'm just going to walk you full of, through full, I'm just going to walk you through the full process. Yeah, I think you should enjoy this video. And I also talk about what happens when it gets cold and dealing with the elements in rendering. So I've got a few little tips for that as well. So yeah, get stuck in. Um, like this video if you're enjoying it. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Nice one, let's crack on. Okay, let's get straight into it. As you can see, we've got um, the render mixed up. And we, like I said, we rung the, uh, the rep directly for Baumit. And uh, he walks through the product selection to be fair. This is the base coat and the top left you can see that star contact white. That is a base coat we're using here um, for this particular system. And it's basically, it's a flexible, I think it's cement based um, render. So you'd, have, you'd apply it directly to the boards, um, there's not much to it. And I will walk you through the process on how you can just um, apply it onto the boards. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to embed the mesh and a particular type of mesh into this product and that allow stop any cracking and it'll allow any movement so this product is very very easy to apply um yeah i forgot how good it was actually i mean look at me i mentioned it right now it's beautiful it's nice to use though isn't it a lot nice and sand cement really in it putting on <laughs> it is um yeah it's nice to apply let me just say that compared to sand cement I find sand cement can be graft sometimes. I do love sand cement, but it can be very unforgiving. This product, very easy. You just apply it directly to the boards. It's sticky. It grips. Um, there's, there's no sagging, and it'll take its own weight. But basically, we've mixed up a batch, and we've not done it too thick. The reason for that is, um, I'm going to show you in a minute, we're going to embed mesh into it. But you don't want the mix at the beginning for this stage in my eyes to be too too thick. So what we do is apply a tie coat of render to the uh, to the board or to the background you're working on, and then basically what that's going to allow us to get to a certain point ahead of ourselves, um, and it's not going to dry up too fast. We don't want this product at this stage to dry up or to start to take up onto the boards. Um, here's my mate Charlie, he's a good friend of mine. We're rendering a whole house together, so we just thought we'd do this gable end together as well. And as you'll see in a minute, it does make sense to work with two people in a silicon-based um, rendering system. I believe it works with two people all the way through. It just makes life so much easier. And um, you'll see why in a second. But like I said, we're putting a very tight coat on. I'd say 3 mil max here. Um, and you can go up to, I think it's 10 mil with this product. We end up adding about 6 mil to it all as a base coat. Um, we're just putting a tight coat on to allow... One, so it's um, it gives us a chance to build up a, a few layers, which makes it easier to um, build a bit of thickness to the overall product. But two, it's just a bit easier at this point. Because it's a bit wetter, because we've mixed it that way, it's a bit easier to put it on thinner as well. 
Um, obviously, like any product, the thicker you um, mix it, the, the, the thicker you can build it out. So we've got it on quite, quite thin at the moment. And that's all good. It's not a problem. We're just working our way through it. So we've got this gable line applied now. Um, I'm just going to put our trowels down. I'm going to get rid of my hawk. And this is why it's so handy to have two people. Because this is the Baumit mesh. This is a render mesh. Um, I also use this in sand cement. I've never used this particular brand, I must admit. But I do use mesh in sand cement. And all you do now, Charlie's pre-cut the lengths. I'm just going to change the camera around so I can show you. You place it roughly where it wants to be. Um, so we've got it spanned across. And then you start in the middle from both of you and you trowel outwards. And now as you can see, this is why we wanted the render to be quite... Uh, it's quite quite thin we didn't want it too thick because we've now got to bed it into the render itself so the best thing to do now is once you've got the mesh in place tightly scrape back the excess render and make sure that it beds firmly into that base coat there you don't want this to be on too loose you need it to be on bedded into the render itself so what you do is open trowel a nice big open trowel scrape all the render through the mesh reapply it back to itself and then bury it basically want to lose the mesh inside the render you don't want it to be showing and you want to bury it completely we are going to add two um, coats of this base coat um, but for now we're just adding like I said a tight coat just so we can get the mesh on so this is why it works so well two people I'm uh, troweling it off Charlie's working ahead of me he's cutting the lengths he's getting them in place obviously working around angles here but if this was a long length you'd be sorted what I did there is I scored a line into the base coat and that what you want is a, you want a six inch overlap on the mesh so you want an overlap of six inch either side and anywhere there's new mesh applied you want six inches overlap to the uh, to the old piece that just allows for expansion and it stops any cracks you don't want any areas exposed here you want mesh all the way through this isn't a system where you can just um, you know just put a few bits of mesh in and leave a few bits out you want the mesh running all the way throughout here so that's why I scored a line it's just a handy trick to because when you bed the mesh you can't see where the mesh has been if you score a line you know exactly where you stand and you know where the six inch overlap is obviously you don't have to measure it I've just done it roughly by eye but it is important to make sure you get a six inch overlap there so yeah open trowel we're pushing all the render back through to the mesh scraping it back and then burying it back into itself and it just makes it very easy at this stage. The render's not drying too fast. It's uh, it's holding on nicely and it's very, very easy process. At this point, we're not worried about getting the walls flat. We're just getting the mesh buried for now. That is the main purpose of this stage. And that's why I always perform two coats of this base coat. One is for this mesh. And now what we'll do after this point is apply the thickness. So usually... I would add like this part, the mix to be a bit thicker, um, but we've just used the same stuff. So all the mesh is applied now. And what we're doing now is we're getting that gay blend flat. I mean, it was pretty good anyway. Charlie, the builder who's working with me now, he's, he's done it in stud work. He's good at his job. It's flat. But now what we're doing is adding the thickness to it. So overall, I think we ended up with like, I think it was about 8 mil. We've got a bead running along the lead at the top. You won't actually see the bead. But in the middle where the two leads are, basically we're working above two bay windows. And in the section above, we've got an expansion joint. Below this silicon render, we've got sand cement. So we've got to work to that expansion joint. The expansion joint is 10 mil. So we're governed by the expansion joint below. So that's what we're putting our thickness to. By the time we put a top coat on, we've got about 10 mil to play with. So yeah, I'd say it's probably I'm lying about 8 mil. So at this point, we've got the mesh bedded into it. Now I'm adding a thickness. Again, very easy to apply. It sticks to the trowel. It doesn't gloop around everywhere like sand cement. It's a lovely product to use. Um, and yeah, all you do is the same process for rendering now. We're going to apply the render, get the thickness on, and then we're going to rule it flat. So we're applying it nice easy motions nothing to worry about and I'm working to that bead at the bottom there we've got a bit of a bell cast leading over to, over to the lead work um, so that way obviously if any water does come down it'll run down and run onto the lead and run off so we have got a bit of a bell cast at the bottom you'll see us working towards that um, but yeah apply the render get your thickness on and then rule it 
Now this is a beauty. It's very, very easy to rule. Very, very easy to rule. It's like ruling hard wall. Uh, that's how I'd compare it. It's like ruling um, British chips and hard wall plaster. It doesn't rule like a sand cement. It just glides across. It doesn't sag. It doesn't fall under its own weight. It sticks and it stays. And it stays sticks nicely to the rule as well. So if you did want to reapply the thickness, just use a rule to put it back on again. But yeah, it is. Um, it was a very nice product to use. And like I said, considering we're using sand cement for the rest of the build, I did wonder why I didn't use this stuff all the way through. <laughs> so yeah, this silly, this uh, this system has opened my eyes a little bit. I know it's a bit more expensive, but it was lovely to use. Um, anyway, I'm working to that expansion joint at the bottom there. That's also I've put the expansion joint just on the side note. It's because obviously we're going from timber at the top to uh, brickwork at the bottom. We put that join directly on the join where the cement board meets the brickwork. And that way if there is any movement, if there is any cracking, it's going to be underneath the expansion join. So like I said, at this point we're governed by the thickness of the bead. We're applying the render to that thickness and then we're ruling it. So I'm just using the last tub at the bottom. Charlie's uh, labour, he's just mixed up a little bit there. Um, so yeah, we're just applying it, putting it on in two stages. First stage being the mesh. Second stage is a thickness, and then we're ruling it flat. Very easy, very simple, nothing complicated. And as you can see, it rules like a dream. Now usually what you do is you rule it, give it a few hours. Well, not even that usually, but you give it a bit of time and you float it. But uh, here's what happens when you decide to put this render system on in the winter. It doesn't always go too well. Okay. So we got the wall, we floated it up, we ruled it off with the product. Problem is, it got a bit cold, and basically the floating stage got neglected. So um, we did manage to float it last night, bit of a trouble really, it's a problem with rendering in winter when the temperature drops. But I did find something out, this advice came from a YouTube viewer, because uh, we were doing sand cement below as well at the same time, we're rendering a whole house. Like I said, the top was done separately because it was done in timber. And, uh, but look at this little tip, put it on my TikTok page, uh, believe it or not, I've got TikTok, whether that means anything, I'm not sure, but <laughs> anyway, check this out, it's pretty, pretty cool. Okay, I've got a bit of render that is not taken up, so I've been told, stick newspaper to it. A lot of moisture from How cool is that, by the way? It's brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> uh, using newspaper to speed up the floating process. Just see it drawing all the moisture from the render, and it really did make a difference. Within about five minutes, uh, I was able to float it. Again, I needed to float it again. It wasn't perfect, but it definitely sped the process up. Uh, so whoever mentioned that on YouTube in the comments, thank you. Um, but here's a crack. That particular wall, we put, did put on too late, to be fair. Um, you want to be putting any render on in the morning. We were just a bit ambitious because it was a bag product and we were onto board, we thought it dried a bit faster. But, came back the next day, jumped on it first thing. So I managed to float it up in the morning. You had to use a bit of water to bring it back, but you know what, it was absolutely fine. So here's footage on me floating that um, that particular bagged render up. We just used a noble, it's my Rafina Diamond Float. I'm a little trusty small float, but yeah, you can do it. I went back the morning after, like I said, still tiny bit playable. It had no rain, there was no frost, thankfully. It was just too cold to float it that night, but I managed to get it. So check this out, we'll carry on with the video. And yeah, a bit of cold in the rendering, it's never too good, but you can get around it. So thank touch wood, we did it. Let's carry on with the process. Uh, yeah, and let's see how it goes. So yeah, bit of a close shave here. I managed to get back in the morning and float it up. Um, usually this product is very nice to float up. It's lovely to float. It closes in nicely, the grain, um, it moves with the float. 
it doesn't clump up and again this product is very good for for not sagging under its own weight but what I always recommend is once you've ruled it I always float up my work I've just got a standard diamond float here I've got two actually because I've got a little one to work along the tops but yeah usually and ideally you'd want to be floating this on the same day you don't want to risk it by coming the next morning like I said it has been winter it is winter in the middle of December so I mean sorry middle of November I'm losing months but yeah um, always float your work it just closes it nicely and it makes it a lot easier when you apply your top coat which are, we are going to do in a minute so always float your work like you would any cement based renders any rendering systems float your base coat make sure you get it flat and make sure it's fl flat smooth and ready for the top coat as you can see we've got it closed in nicely there that's it mate put your head in the camera How's it going? <laughs> oh, it's on. I didn't I didn't know it was on. Yeah. I'm going in. Okay, so now time for the top coat. Very easy. You don't even have to mix this stuff. It comes in tubs. 25 kilogram tubs, all the products in there. What I would do though, and this is what I recommend, I do put a little bit in the water at the top actually. Put a little bit of water in, mix it up. And the water helps it stick to the background a bit better. If I, I find if you use this product directly as it is, obviously you've always got to give it a little mix. But if you use it as it is, then I find it's not as sticky and it does um it does fall down a lot. I add a bit of water and it just uh, helps it to the addition to the base coat there. But this system works again ideally with two people. Charlie's working ahead of me. He's applying this stuff. And you'd put it on very, very tight. Very tight. So what he's doing is putting a tight coat on with his trowel there. Um, as you can see me in the background floating it up. We'll go into that specifically in a minute. But now we'll just talk about application. He's putting a tight, tight coat on. And um, this isn't used for thickness. This is basically paint with aggregate in it. And the thickness is dependent on the grain. We're using a 1.5 grain. Which that is the thickness of the top coat. So the top coat is going to be 1.5 millimeters thickness. So he's applying it right, he's putting it on tight. What I do is I follow up behind with my float. And this is a, a different kind of float by the way. It's, um, it's a float designed for silicon renders. So what he does is he applies it as tight as he can. I come up behind him, I scrape the render back with my float and then I float it. We're going to go into this close up in a minute and you will see it close up. But that is a general rule of, rule of thumb. Two people, one's applying it as tight as you can leave it for a little bit and then I'm coming up directly from behind floating it up and that way there's no lag time because this this is a fast system it's not like sand cement when you wait hours to finish a top coat you apply it you float it it's finished that is it that's why this system is so easy and so beautiful to use because there's not much waiting around on the top coat said you were putting it on we're um, floating it back and then that is literally it but again, I'm starting, Charles just gone downstairs. I don't know what he's doing. He's up in labor or something. <laughs> but I'm coming up behind him now. And as you can see, I'm scraping any thickness back. And the reason why you want to be scraping it, when you float it, it closes in itself. The aggregate starts to close in. You start to get this nice textured look. Um, you don't want it on too thick. And as you'll find when you're using it, if it is too thick, it doesn't float very nicely. This is the float we're talking about. It's a Rafina one, a silicon float. All you do is small circular motions. Look, as you can see, there's thickness there. Even though Charlie's putting it on thin, I mean quite thin, I'm still scraping it back. I just find, and I was taught this way in New Zealand, we're going to get the best finish that way and you get a nice closed grain. So he's putting it on, I'm scraping it back, and then circular motions, we're just closing the aggregate into itself, closing it in nicely. It makes a massive difference and it just gives a nice complex finish. Um, I love the sound of it as well, listen to this. Do we need to now, Charles? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, just one. Oh, okay, yeah. Today. As you can hear, it's all that grain's packing in nicely to itself. It's working closely together, but like I said, it's a very thin product. Don't worry, we clean the lead afterwards, by the way. We didn't have any product to stick it down. You li we literally put it on, we clean it up straight away. You'll see in a minute, Charlie starts to clean up as soon as we're done. 
But this is a very fast process. Like I said, all we're doing, tight circular motions, pushing that grain into itself. But the big tip is to make sure it's thin. As you can see, there was a bit of excess. Scrape it back, put it right back into the tub. Don't waste it, because once you put the lid back on this tub, you can use it up straight away. Um, and you can remix it. It does have a sell by date once it's opened, but it's fine to use. Again, all I'm working is working towards that bell cast at first. And small, tight, circular motions, very easy. The big trick is just to make sure you're scraping back the thickness. That is a big trick here in terms of the top coat. But it's not a hard system at all. It's like applying a tight coat of skim and then floating it. Very, very easy. And the beauty of this is the product is in the render itself. So the product's colour, sorry, the colour of the system is is in the render. So you can have, I think it's 888 different colours that Biomet do. I've just read that myself, didn't know that. <laughs> But yeah, the colour is in the product, so you don't have to paint it afterwards. This is literally a finished system. So once it's floated, it's job done. So yeah, very, very easy. And it leaves a lovely finish. Nothing complex about it. It's um, You put it on, you flow it off, job done. I think this took us about an hour, maybe, after cleaning the leg work as well. I know it's only a small area, but... That's Charlie cleaning up lead work. We do get wipes on it as well. But it's very, very easy and very, very fast. And, you know, if used with insulation, it's very effective. Um, so, yeah, that is how easy a system is. It's beautiful. So, yeah, that is the silicon system. It's pretty cool, eh? Very easy to use compared to sand cement. There's not much lag time. There's no wait time for the top coat. You put it on, you flow it off. Job done. Uh, yeah, it was a beauty to use, I must admit. I, didn't, I can't remember last time I used it it was in New Zealand like I said which was a good few years ago now so it was cool it's definitely recommended like I said I think the biggest confusion is knowing what products to use I just rung the rep up directly um, and we sorted it that way and they were great to be fair they led us in the right direction um, so hopefully we'll be using this a bit more in the future because it was it was a dream but yeah that is the full process on how to do a silicon based rendering system uh, it's not rocket science like I said, the biggest problem is choosing the right products for your scenario. So yeah, if you like this video, please leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. Are you a sand cement renderer through and through? Are you, uh, or do you use silicon-based renders? Or, uh, you know, what is your preference? Let us know what you think. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And please subscribe to our channel if you found it useful. Uh, we'd love it if you'd follow us on our journey. We're going to keep finding out these new systems. Keep trying out new tools. And keep doing different, different types of plastering. So yeah, I'm Blaine Gray. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Have a good day. Awesome.